أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته التيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم This is the fifth chapter of the book Burunsi In the previous chapter we were talking about how people had gathered in the haram of Imam Raza alayhi salam and were protesting against the Shah's regime and how the Sawak was barbarically massacring the people there. His wife continues to narrate that I was really worried for him, especially regarding all those cassettes and the books of Imam Khomeini that he had handed over to me before he left. A couple of days had passed and he did not return. I couldn't have waited any longer for him. I took Imam Khomeini's risala and handed over to his brother. He pulled out a tile from the garden in his house, emptied some sand from there and hid the risala under the tile and packed it off back to normal. Now I was left with all the books and cassettes. I remembered among our neighbors Burunsi was a teacher to one of their kids. I thought to myself, let me do tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and take all this stuff to him. If Allah wills, he will help me out. To my surprise, they warmly welcomed me and took all the stuff from me and said, we will hide all the stuff, please do not worry. Almost a week or more had passed and there was no news from Burunsi. During these days, the Sawak would come to our place and used to bother us a lot. Sometimes they would come and say, Burunsi has been hanged to death and his body will be discarded. You will not even get a chance to see his face. How dare he revolt against Shah? On the 10th day, someone came to me and said, Burunsi is alive. It was hard to believe him. But then I asked him in a stern voice, where is he now? He said, he's in Wakilabad jail. And if you wish to release him, then you have to pay a penalty of 100,000 tuman, which is almost equal to $100,000, or deposit your house papers there. I felt sad because neither did I have that much money, nor the papers of the house were with me. Then he left. I was left with hundreds and thousands of questions echoing in my head. I was desperately praying that I could find some solution. I just did not know what to do. Whom do I approach to be able to procure such a large amount? Or who would be willing to give their house papers to rescue Burunsi? Even if someone would agree to this, they would have definitely not agreed to go to the police station. And how can I trust the person who gave me this news? Maybe this is all a trick. I was confused and wondering what to do. A couple of days had passed and suddenly the doorbell rang. I wore my chadar, went to the door and opened it. When the man saw me, he put his head down and gave salams to me. I replied back and asked him, what does he want? He said, I am Ghayasi. Burunsi was working at my house, but it's been few days that he has not come. I have come to fetch him. I was relieved that it is not Sawak. I broke into tears and in broken words tried to explain to him what had transpired in the last 10 days. He said, please don't worry, I have my house papers with me. I will go today itself and bail him out of the jail, inshallah. Then he left. I was extremely happy. I was praying that Burunsi would come back as soon as possible. It was almost afternoon time and I heard a lot of commotion outside the house. I quickly took my little daughter in the arms and ran towards the door. The shopkeeper next to our house was distributing sweets among people. I took a few more steps to see if Abdul Hussein has come back. Then I spotted him far away. I was shocked looking at him. Is he the same Abdul Hussein that used to live here just a few days ago? He looked extremely weak and tired. His face had shrunk in. His face had become small. People were reciting salwat after salwat and were extremely happy. However, Burunsi was really sad and upset. He crossed the gathering and entered the house. I came in after him. He turned to me and said, close the door. I closed the door and came and stood in front of him. It looked like he had grown old. He looked at least a decade older. When he opened his mouth to say something, I noticed that all his teeth were missing. He said, I wish I was martyr during the firing and massacre. Then he went into the room. Some of the relatives had also come over, including his parents. I remember they were also there. He just greeted them and then went to take shower. That day I asked him hundreds of times, what happened to you in the jail? Tell me how did they torture you? But he replied nothing. Slowly his health fully recovered. Again, his friends used to gather at home and started their activities. He was telling them what hell broke on him in the prison. He said, they had tied my hands and legs and they put a gun on my head at point blank. And the other guard was constantly slapping me and asking me, tell me where are your other members? I said, there is no one. There is no one with me. I work alone. 
the guard turned to another one there and said, look at him, even after all this beating, he doesn't want to confess. He again started beating me up. Finally, he got fed up and started punching me in the face. He was punching me so hard that with every punch, he would break one of my tooth. He was laughing while narrating the helplessness of the Sawak, and I was silently shedding tears behind the curtain. He had lost most of his teeth, and he was tortured in many different ways. However, all this did not break him. Rather, he felt much stronger in his will now and had intensified his activities. There was another protest soon. People fought back against the Sawak. Abdul Hussein had also participated in the protest. It was almost afternoon and he did not come back. Then the night fell upon us and he still did not return. Now, I did not worry so much as earlier. Him getting arrested had become a norm now. Later that night, his friends came home. I now knew for sure that he was arrested. They asked me, do you have cement at home? I showed them the cement. They took all the posters and risala of Imam Khomeini and hid it under the stairs and plastered it with the cement. Then they handed over the cassettes and the books to me, asking me to hide them somewhere. Early morning, I went to the same neighbor to request them to help me hide these things. When she opened the door, I told her that Burunsi has been arrested again, and here are some books and cassettes that need to be taken care of. She replied, My apologies. I do not have the courage to deal with these anymore. I just froze there. Then she sternly said, My husband is not at home, and I do not have the permission to take any such material in his absence. I immediately returned home. I was worried. What would I do with these things? I said to myself, let me place my trust upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me do tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hide these things here itself. Then I thought to myself, anyways, Abdul Hussein desires martyrdom all the time. If the Sawak discovers these things here, then his dream of martyrdom will come true. I took some cassettes and stuffed them in the pillows. There were some rugs lying in the corner of the room. I stuffed some cassettes and books in it and took some of the books to the basement and hid them in the kitchen utensils and now i was waiting for the sawak one day i was sitting in the room hassan mahdi hussein and my little daughter was with me suddenly the sawak soldiers jumped over the walls and entered the house my elder son hassan was just seven then this incident had such a deep psychological shock upon him that he started stuttering from then on I saw the Sawak jumping over the wall and entering the house. I tried to get up, but one of them pointed his gun at me and shot around and said, If you move even an inch, I will shoot you in the head. Then they started ransacking the house looking for the cassettes and the books. I took the pillow stuffed with the cassettes and placed my daughter on it, as though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was guiding me what to do. I quickly peeped from the corner of my eye towards the rugs, because they just had to turn the rugs and they would have all the evidences in their hands. I was desperately praying to the Imam Zamana Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Farajo Sharif to help us out, and as though Imam Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Farajo Sharif had blinded them, they did not even look towards the rugs, as though the rugs were never there. They searched for a long time and couldn't find anything. Losing all hope, they went back. Then Mr. Ghiyasi deposited his house papers again and bailed out Burunsi. Then Burunsi came home with some of the house students and the first thing he asked was about the cassettes. I said, look behind the rugs. And when they saw all the stuff there, they were shocked. He said, are you telling me that Sawa couldn't find these cassettes here? I said, if they would have found them, then they would have taken everything with them and your dream of martyrdom would have come true. He started laughing. Then he asked about the rest of the cassettes. Then I told him, why don't you try and search them? He looked for them for a few minutes, then said, please don't trouble me. Tell me where are they? Then I pointed towards the pillow and they were totally shocked. He asked, are you telling me the Sawak never noticed these cassettes at such an easy spot? Few days after the release of Burunsi, Imam Khomeini returned from Paris and the revolution was successful and Shah fled the country. Burunsi went to fetch the house papers of Mr. Ghayasi, but the papers were sent to Tehran. So they both went to Tehran to fetch the house papers. When they returned, they had some other documents with them apart from the house papers. He laughingly handed over those other papers to me. I asked, what are these papers? He said, this is my death sentence. I was shocked and I froze in my place. The fact is, when he was arrested, his file was sent to Tehran, and due to the severity of his crimes, he was sentenced to death. I took the papers in the hand and thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because if Imam Khomeini would not have returned from Paris and Shah would not have fled the country, they would have hanged Burunsi in the next couple of days.
Inshallah, we will cover the rest of the content in the next chapter. Until then, iltimas-e-dua, khuda hafiz.